सहनावतो सहनो भुनक्त सह वीर्यम करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिदिषावह ओ शातिशाशाति नमो नारायणाय नमो नारायणाय नमो नारायणाय शिवसरंभा शंकराचार्यमध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाष्यकृत वंदे भगवतपुनपुन समस्तजनकल्याणी निरत करुणाम नमा चिन्म देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर ओं नमो भगवते वैवस्वताय मृत्यवे ब्रह्म विद्याचार्याय नचिकेत से We'll chant this first verse together. Purame kada shadvaram ajasya vakracheta sah anushthaya na shochati vimuktascha vimuchyate. Yes, the one who pays attention to this entity, which is very different from the body. whose properties are very different from the properties of the body this entity which is the self which is pure consciousness what happens to this person this person becomes free from all shoka all sorrows and also this person becomes liberated free from the birth death cycle now a little more deeper this avakrachetasa you know the term you know here bhagwan shankara ji ji says you know there is a philosophy called kshanika vijnanavada 
ಕ್ಷಣಿಕ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಬುದ್ಧಿಸ್ಟ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಒನ್ ಎಮಂಗ್ ದ ಮೆನಿ ಬ್ರಾಂಚಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿಸ್ಟ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದೆಮ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಯು ನೋ ಎವ್ರಿ ಕ್ಷಣ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಲ್ಯೂಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಚೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಕ್ಷಣಿಕ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನವಾದ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ಷಣಿಕ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಲೈಟ್ ಎ ಲ್ಯಾಂಪ್ ದ ಫ್ಲೇಮ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮೊಮೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ಲೇಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಎ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಆಯಿಲ್ ವಾಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಬರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆಯಿಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಗಾನ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಆಯಿಲ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೌ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಬರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಅನ್ಇಂಟರಪ್ಟೆಡ್ ಫ್ಲೋ ವಿ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಜಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೂಫ್ ದಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ನೌ ವೆನ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಚೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಮೊಮೆಂಟ್ we can't you know verify it or deny it so here bhagwan shankara says is the proof what is the proof in the scripture that it is not true that consciousness is constantly you know like the oil you know the river also the river appears to be constant but actually it is not constant every moment the water which you are seeing is different because there is a flow so in the same way what is the proof that this consciousness is not changing what is the proof so the scriptural proof is this avakra chetasa this consciousness is avakra means what nityam avasthitam ekarupa of course experiential proof is this what is it that awareness because of which i was aware of my childhood days that very same awareness is now in my old days what is the proof the proof is i the experiencer of the past himself is the i who is a recollector in the present there are two entities two eyes here the i the experiencer of the past today the i the rememberer of the past in my old age i am remembering how is it that i am able to remember that itself shows that i was there at that time what is the proof that this i is not different from that i that i experienced this i is able to remember that experience therefore we have to say this awareness who is aware of this recollection is the same awareness who was experiencing so this way also we can say consciousness is not changing anyway this was little technical thing moving forward so the whole point the whole message of upanishad is this shift your attention to this awareness now naturally a question may come fine i may shift this attention to awareness but what about this world i don't find this i there this self this consciousness i don't see it there it appears to be very much different it appears to be an independent entity which has nothing to do with i or the consciousness what about this world so the next verse is about jagat page number 232 and this verse also gives an indication or a, a, a sadhana for purification of mind there are so many ways so in upanishad it is full of varieties of ways to reach the self verse number 2 page number 232 hamsa shuchishat ವಸುರಂತರಿಕ್ಷಸತ್ ಹಂಸಶುಚಿಷತ್ ವಸುರಂತರಿಕ್ಷಸತ್ ಹ್ಯ 
होता वे दिशत अतिथिर दुरोण सत नृषत वरसत ऋतसत व्योम सत नृषत वरसत ऋतसत व्योम सत अब्जागोजा ऋतजा अद्रिजा ऋत बृहत इट्स नॉट उपनिषद सो देर फोर ताला बेताला एवरीथिंग विल बी देर वी सम हाउ फिक्स ए मीटर फॉर इट ओके हम सशुचिषत वसुरंतरिक्षसत होता वे दिशत अतिथिर दुरोण सत नृषत वरसत ऋतसत व्योम सत अब्जागोजा ऋतजा अद्रिजा ऋत बृहत यस वॉट डज इट मीन सो द फर्स्ट वन हम सह शुचिषत सो नाउ लेट मी टेल यू सो हियर द एसेंस ऑफ द वर्स इज दैट सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज रिसाइडिंग इन एवरीथिंग सो सम सैंपल्स आर गिवन हियर that lord which is there as the self in me which is as there as a consciousness consciousness in me that very same lord has become everything in this world so therefore when you interact with this world at the back of the mind may you always be aware of this truth that there is nothing other than you there is none other than you this is the message okay so if you see so this vision is necessary to number 1 cultivate humility number 2 cultivate gratitude number 3 cultivate a wonder when you look at the world you should be filled with wonder you should be filled with reverence for the lord he's seeing his power his majesty his glory and then you see whole world is the glory of the lord and that lord where is he <laughs> not somewhere he is right here as the self this is the way okay go out to go in that is the purpose of the world go out to you know just like the ball you hit it and then the ball ba- ball bounces back to you in the same way pay attention to the world in order to go within that's the whole idea understand the glory of the lord seated in you as a self by understanding the glory of the world going out should always be to go within if this way you are making use of the world then you have thoroughly made use of the world if you are going out to go out then you are lost <laughs> the going out always should be to go in the glory of the self has to be understood by paying attention to the glory of the world okay so the first one ham sah shuchi shat so in fact the third chapter there is a verse in bhagavad gita vibhuti yoga 
this verse is the essence of the entire 10th chapter of bhagavad gita we can say hmm. there is a verse in bhagavad gita yad yad vibhuti mat sarvam shreemadurjidameva tat tadeva avagachhatvam mama tejom shasambhavam arjuna whatever you see in this world yat yat vibhuti mat whatever glory you see in this world shreemat whatever prosperity you see in this world urjitam whatever power you see the splendor you see whatever you see in this world tat tat eva avagacha all that you understand mama tejom shasambhavam all these are my own glory borrowing from a small fraction of my glory they appear glorious it is not their independent glory don't get carried away by them instead their glory should remind you of my glory this is the whole verse so that essence is what you find here in this verse and this is the way you must look into this world there is a way of interacting with this world how we should do it that is a word that is the message of this verse okay so the first one hamsah shuchi shat hamsah means what hanti gachati ti that which moves that's called as hamsa so anything that which moves can be called hamsa it need not be a swan <laughs> so here shuchi shat shuchi means what suchau divye adityatmana sidati in the form of sun so when you look into the sky what do you see the sun moving isn't it so this verse says this great truth is residing there in the moving sun so now if you are looking at the sun oh is a bundle of gases helium hydrogen gone <laughs> you are lost how you should see that glory which i am seeing there it's the glory of the lord and that lord is here <laughs> you understood that is a way to look at it hmm. so what is the size of this sun we are not against science we are not against science use all those scientific data the sun is 13 lakh times bigger than the earth no there is a wonder my god and it is constantly burning 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 imam vivasute yogam proktavan aham avyayam bhagwan says i gave this knowledge to sun god so that vivasvan is burning 24 by 7 it is burning sunday is a holiday for us but sunday is not a holiday for <laughs> and interestingly it is burning and that light is you know ekarupa brilliance ekarupa what is that thing and the right distance is kept earth and the sun little close will burn to death little far will freeze to death who has fixed that distance so knowing god how do you know god by not knowing the glory of god itself is a way to go no god no that is saying <laughs> you are just wondering you are not trying to know anything there is a wonder my god everything is so beautiful so perfect what is that verse in 15th chapter aditya comes now swamiji in between don't ask swamiji we have to start from urdhamula madhashaka aditya vatte jagad bhase te khilam chandramasi achagnam tat tejo vidhi mamakam si yada aditya gatam tejah jagad bhase te khilam yat adityagatam tejah jagat bhase the whole world is illumined that tejas it is mine 
Bhagavan says. Don't think that it is some chemical reaction happening. And, oh, don't do that. Then you cannot become a devotee. Bhutani anti bhutejya you will become. Those who meditate on the elements, they go to elements. Mad bhakta yanti mamapi. So you are also using the world, but the glory of the world is used to make you a devotee of the Lord. Every wonderment that you see in the world should make you a better devotee. Oh my God, what is that power? This way. Correct. Hamsaha Shuchishat. What is the size of that sun? 13 lakh times bigger. And what is the distance? 15 crore kilometers it is. With that distance it is illuminating. So when you look at the sun, when you look at the sun, what are you actually looking at? Your mind is thinking of the glory of the Lord. And where is that Lord? Right here is the consciousness. That light which is illumining the sun, that God is here only. Go out to go in. Okay. Unless you have respect, reverence, devotion, love for something, you can't focus your mind upon that thing. So developing that love, reverence for God, which is the self. So all these virtues when you cultivate, so there is gratitude there. There is humility, oh my God, compared to this one, I am nothing. I am not even a dust. <laughs> I am carrying my big ego. I am a big somebody. What are you? Not even a dust particle. You know. The world is a beautiful place to become humble. If you actually analyze things, it can make you humble, grateful. Tinkle, tinkle, little star. Why wonder what you are? All children only wonder. Big people, they never wonder about anything. <laughs> The ability to wonder is a sign of a pure mind. Only pure mind wonder. You don't have to find an answer for everything. Not necessary. Let it be unanswered. Why should I insist that I must know everything about God? If he is infinite, definitely I cannot know. I am a finite being who can never understand the infinity of the Lord. That inability... Confession of the inability to understand the Lord is real understanding of the Lord. <laughs> Just leave yourself in that wonder. So when that heart is filled with that wonderment, with humility, with gratitude, O oh Lord, how you are taking care of all of us. That source of energy in this world, the body is functioning because of that sun. All the plants get that nourishment. It's able to prepare food because of that sunlight. Isn't it? Hamsa Shuchi. So in this direction, the mind should go. This is also a meditation. Okay. And finally, we should end up <laughs> in the self. This self is that. That is the glory of this self. So I am not away from the Lord. It is not some God, the glory of some God who has no connection with me, who is far away from me. No. It is my God. You know. It is the glory of my God. And my should always be there. Then only you enjoy it. Hamsa Shuchishat. So in the same way you have to analyze every word. Vasuhu antarikshasat. What is Vasu means? Vaseti sarvan iti Vasuhu. That which pervades everything. That is called as Vasu. That's how the term Vasudeva, Vasudeva etc. has come. That who is all pervading. But here what does it mean? Antarikshasat. Vayu atmana antarikshe sidati. That which is present in the antariksha. In the space. How? In the form of Vayu. Air. So meditate on air. 
what's the glory of air <laughs> you stop breathing then you will know <laughs> is vayu is an amazing entity you know silently it will help you it's not available to see but without it one moment also i can't exist but is it telling you see because of me you are existing <laughs> no it is silent that's the way we should help others silent not imposing unseen why you is amazing vasurandarikshasat there are different ways of meditating sometimes just your breathing you just pay attention to the air going in what happens after going in i don't know <laughs> but something happens air going out be grateful to that vayu oh vayu i am all the time thinking of carbohydrates and protein and dieting and this and this most important thing i don't pay attention without food i can live for days together without water also i can live for days together but without air my god the most important thing and i don't pay attention to you the power of the vayu again you can meditate that whirlwind oh my god what is that power that storm when it comes everybody goes away from there why don't you control it and stop there i'm sorry we don't have that facility <laughs> so that power belongs to whom don't say it belongs to some is a natural phenomena a pressure difference temperature difference it comes if you find some such stupid superficial answer it may be superficially right we are not against we are not against any of those but finally that analysis should end up in power of the law tatta deva vagachchatvam mama tejom sha sambhavam yes oh lord by your will it has come so wonderment humility gratitude all these emotions should again and again again and again occupy that mind then that mind becomes a pure mind okay so see so much of content is there for contemplation isn't it see these kinds of meditation are comparatively far easier than meditating upon you know consciousness and awareness etc so when you are not able to meditate upon awareness if it is difficult do this whenever you are not able to go to the deeper level meditate upon the superficial level sometimes when the mind is not sufficiently satvik you will not be able to go deep within when the mind is sufficiently satvik meditate upon consciousness because it is possible but the when the mind is mixed with rajas and tamas then you can't go deep because that mind is blunt not sharp so such a blunt mind what you should do these kinds of meditation should be used let it go to the world but let it come back charged with the divine thoughts vasurandarikshasat why is also called pavana pavana means what that which purifies you know anything any bad smell why you comes and everything is pure hmm. so this way there are so many angles in which you can meditate hanuman ji is called vayu putra you see embodiment of power vasurandarikshasat then comes hota vedishat hota actually hota means the one who is performing the ritual but here bhagwan shankaracharya ji takes a different meaning he says hota means agni and what is vedishat vedyam prithivyam sidati iti vedishat then 
which dwells in vedi vedi means earth prithviya so the earth existing upon i mean fire existing upon earth again meditate upon fire whatever inventions technological advancements have come it is all because of fire yes or no that fire element is unavoidable you have to melt the metals fire element fire element means a heat element in the body also and the chicago people without fire you can't survive here <laughs> <laughs> the heater when the heat comes <laughs> it is the expression of the lord only what else just imagine minus 30 degree and all temperature still we are surviving here because of whose glory swami ji is because of the heater swami ji uh, imperfect analysis <laughs> that lord who is manifesting as heater uh, now it's here. every time connected to lord that is a culture that is a beauty of our culture everything is connected to lord every science is connected to lord astronomy astrology everywhere it is connected to god that is the beauty of this culture fire aspects there is an external fire and there is an internal fire what is the external fire the fire so you cook there so the food which you cook without cooking you can't eat so thank you fire for helping me cook this food and after eating there is another fire which again digests it so the internal fire aham vaishvanaro bhutva praninam deham ashritah prana pana samayukta pachamyannam chaturvidam ai as vaishwanara as a digestive fire i am the one who is digesting the food and that's why we chant this 15 chapter before you know lunch why do we chant 15 chapter that eating also is a sacred activity because in that digestive fire i am offering food habis you see hota vidishat fire and the power of the fire oh my god one spark is enough the whole power of atom bombs and hydrogen bombs what is that power it's all the power of fire so this way our thought should go every time connected with the lord that ability in the fire to burn who has given the ability the lord has given and that is why we have such stories you know when hanuman ji burned the entire lanka did that fire was it capable of burning its tail did hanuman ji feel hot <laughs> burning sensation in the tail no so in tulsi ramayana it is you know how can fire burn the devotee of the lord that ability of the fire to burn it has come from the lord how can that fire ever burn his devotee you see so even though the whole world was burning hanuman ji still was not burning that is the message in the same way the story of prahlad also holika was there keeping prahlad on her lap holika got burned <laughs> but prahlad was unaffected you see how beautifully the same concept is brought out in a story form you see isn't it in keno upanishad you find this there is a beautiful story so all the devatas became very arrogant after winning over asuras so they had a party <laughs> so in the party everyone was talking about himself we got the me only you on the war so indra was there vayu was there agni was there actually speaking they all won because of god's grace 
they went to god you know all puranas that so it is so they all go to go bhagwan save me and they go okay i will come and then by grace of god they defeat asuras and then these people become arrogant it's a very typical pattern and this is what actually happens to us also in the beginning we pray bhagwan save me everything is fine success then we forget god it is that natural tendency of human mind when everything goes fine i take credit so then what happened all these devatas they were celebrating they became arrogant they became drunk with pride bhagwan understood this he thought i should teach them a lesson and then as we were celebrating they found somebody standing far away <laughs> they asked who is that i don't know i have not seen one yaksha it was in the form of a yaksha so indra the king said why are you you go find out who that person is he is standing there and staring at us <laughs> why are you went so before why you could ask who are you that yaksha asked, who are you don't you know me i'm the most mighty wind wind god vayu devata oh is it so yeah yeah we can do this that he just puts on dry blade of grass okay blow it away the wind tries just dry blade of grass you know he tries everything could not hung his head in shame and comes back they ask who was that i don't know i don't know he did not tell what happened there <laughs> he said i'm sorry i could not agni go same thing happens yaksha puts the same dry blade of grass <laughs> burn it he tries nothing happens comes back finally indra grows i mean indra grows he disappears and finally indra comes to know that he was none other than bhagwan indra stays there with all humility he understands that there is something higher i must bow down so that story is there. so all stories nothing but you know all our stories in the puranas they are somewhere or they are connected to the vedas and the upanishads in a story form it has come that's all so hota vedishat atithi hi durona sat atithi means what no there are two meanings given by bhagwan shankaracharya the first meaning is atithi means soma rasa soma san duroneshu kalasheshu sidati a soma juice it resides in the kalasha in a pot <laughs> so puja gurudev found that this is irrelevant in the modern times <laughs> so he did not take that meaning at all in the text a soma juice so this is a particular juice soma rasa which you drink while performing rituals now how it is relevant we don't know but there is another meaning given by bhagwan brahmana atithi rupena va duroneshu griheshu sidati so atithir durona sat means atithi atithi means what ha guest duroneshu duroneshu means griheshu so the atithi who comes to our house that lord is residing in him also now generally we translate atithi as guest but it has a deeper meaning actually atithi is not guest atithi means what the one who comes without telling tithi date and time is called atithi all those guests are called satithi they already tell you are you there <laughs> they are not atithi in fact there is a deeper meaning also the moment atithi word came bhagwan shankaracharya uses the term brahmana so therefore we have to understand this term a little you see in those times how did they ensure that the knowledge of the scriptures are available for everyone because broadcasting system were not there at that time how did they ensure so it was made a kind of mandatory rule that anyone who is 
noble virtues in the society who have the knowledge of the scriptures must go around to spread this knowledge because for peace and harmony in the world in the society in the family this knowledge is absolutely essential so therefore the brahmanas who were brahmana means it is not the jati it is the you know what you call people who are cultured noble ones who have the knowledge of the scriptures so those people they used to go and generally in the temples etc they would conduct some kind of discourses giving the knowledge of the scriptures so now in those times traveling arrangement was not there at the most bullock cart most of the time they would walk only and lot of jungles were also there <laughs> those times now everything is clean so lot of forest means what lot of wild animals so in the evenings as they walk and many days they had to walk it is not that you know, just so they just did not know where they are going to land up by the evening and evening they need some residence so such people who are selflessly serving the society for the welfare of all taking minimum and giving maximum such people are called atithi is understanding has to be there so these noble people so the scriptures made a law what is it atithi hi atithi devo bhava they made a law means we never such atithi come who are selflessly serving the society day and night for the welfare of all such people should be ha uh, whatever they need it should be provided the food stay etc so somewhere you land up and it's evening time you can't walk it's all forest so then whichever the nearby house is you go there so they were supposed to every house there was supposed to keep one room especially for atithis so that the privacy of the family is not affected so that particular room is kept only for them so that you know they can they can come any time they can go any time <laughs> and whenever they are there food is provided that's called as atithi devo so now you understand it is not some you know <laughs> so such people generally they are brahmanas highly brahmana means highly noble cultured evolved full of devotion virtuous such people so somebody you must have this understanding of atithi now so whenever they come there should be some food for them they should have a place for rest so in such atithi you must see god that is a meaning here so in such atithi in such noble people so naturally you will find so many virtues in them noble virtues their dispassion the devotion the mastery over their senses the perfection of their time management the discipline with which they live life control in everything moderation in everything whether it is speaking whether it is eating everything yukta har vihara so all these noble virtues you see so when you see such noble virtues in them where should the mind go all those virtues in them are because they meditate on god and therefore these virtues actually belong to god and this is what happens the more and more we meditate upon god the virtues of god start reflecting through us we become an instrument through which these virtues of the lord start expressing so when you are seeing such noble people in the society your mind should go to god that's the meaning atithi durona sat right yes then what nrshat nrshat shat means dwelling in existing in nr nr means what manushya so nrshu manushyeshu sidati iti that 
Lord is residing in every human being. That very same Lord is existing in every human being. So how to meditate now? Never hate anyone. <laughs> you see, the moment you have hatred towards anyone, what happens to your mind? It's disturbed. Why? Because you are not hating that person, you are hating God himself, your creator himself. The moment you start hating your own creator, there is a disturbance in the mind. you are disturbed you cannot be at peace when you are hating anyone no no that person is a terrible fellow even then you hate it you, you had it <laughs> correct hatred is unacceptable you know why we hate people we hate people because you give so much of importance to bmi that you completely ignore the consciousness and living in the bmi that is why that hatred comes so what are you paying attention to you are paying attention to the insignificant thing and you are ignoring the important thing the lord is in the heart of all when you don't see that lord and when you are seeing only the some wrong things of that person then you start hating so where is the problem problem is in my vision i will be affected by what i see what is it that which i am paying attention to if i am paying attention to the lord in everyone mind is ever peaceful if i am paying attention to the imperfections of the bmi then the mind is disturbed rushat also when you see the talents and abilities of a person the great cricketers and footballers and singers and scientists these are all the great talents and abilities you see in people what you should be reminded of <laughs> this talent doesn't belong to this person it belongs to the lord bhagwan is called hiranya garbha what is hiranya garbha garbha means a womb hiranya means what treasure hiranya means actually gold treasure the one in whose womb all the treasures of the world are so each one of us we have chosen one treasure we asked from him and he gave it a small fraction of it <laughs> that is why people are famous and glorious and talented what ever talents and abilities you are seeing in the world everything is coming from whom it is like the tap you know you open the tap water is coming but water doesn't belong to the tap it belongs to the tank again the tank water is also coming from some ground water and the ground water is also basically coming from rain water and the rain water is coming from ocean so every water directly or indirectly it is coming from ocean in the same way all these talents and abilities that you see in people where does it belong to so what happens when you are not able to have this vision there comes inferiority complex and jealousy and envy and he has it i don't have oh finished you are but suppose this vision is there are that talent belongs to my god <laughs> then what happens you are able to celebrate that also wow bhagwan what beautiful way you are doing it through that particular instrument i am able to see your glory and where is that god here <laughs> you see he is never away from me that is the way the world has to be seen then you will find that you are able to happily congratulate the achievements of others joyfully you are able to celebrate the achievements of others wherever this vision is lacking that person is going to be miserable how much ever talented that person may be this vision is the ultimate vision and we have to cultivate we have no choice nrushat anything great you see in anyone understand it belongs to god but that is in me that you tell me you say it is not yours ha huh? it belongs to god ha huh? don't <laughs> that means you are jealous <laughs> you don't have to tell when you have to congratulate go and congratulate great 
wonderful thing you have done it is something silently you have to keep in mind it is not something to you know tell you see nrishat so be grateful to everyone but at the same time always remember through these human beings it is the lord alone who is you know and you will find that we are all made dependent on all human beings you see life is such we are all dependent on so many people in fact we are dependent on everyone somebody or the other i mean some way or the other everyone is contributing to my existence on this planet so be grateful to everyone but at the same time understand that the ultimate string puller is the lord nrishat and then varasat varasat means what vareshu deveshu sidati iti vara means devatas the best vara means best so who are the best ones devatas they have done lot of punyas and therefore they are in devaloka and all those so they are called as the best ones so in the devatas also who reside bhagwan alone all the powers that we see in these devatas vayu devata agni devata varuna devata also so many devatas they these powers don't belong to just like the story of kena upanishad it is not their power it is coming from him now this knowledge is very essential because there are people who are fighting in the names of gods you know my god is superior our god is superior what is upanishad saying everything comes from him don't fight in the name of god all gods their powers that come from the supreme lord who is none other than the consciousness in us so how many gods are there then one hmm. you see varasat then rutasat what is rutam so bhagwan shankaracharya says rutam satyam yatnyo va rutam can have two meanings rutam can mean satyam truth or rutam can also mean yatnya so in truth try to see god Mahatma Gandhi dedicated his life for this my experiment with truth actually he was experimenting with god god is truth who oh, if god is truth let me try to know god through truth that is called as my experiment with truth let me be truthful and let me see whether by walking the path of truth i am able to meet god this was his experiment any person who does this i will stick to truth he will come face to face with god you know if you can be truthful in your transactional world the way to absolute truth is through transactional truth satyen pantha vitato devayana upanishad says so a person who can stick to truth he will reach god there is a beautiful story which i have heard there is a book called himalayan masters living with the himalayan masters a beautiful book swami rama there is a beautiful, nice story there so there is this station master a very corrupt person because everybody was corrupt there so he was also so then one day his guru happened to pass that way so he went to his guru i said oh guru give me some sadhana to do the guru said for the next 4 months don't lie <laughs> he said okay guru has said he bowed down and he stuck to those words you know within one week inspection team came into that you know station railway station and they started asking question now he had taken a walk he started telling everything you know what bribe is to take and everything 
Now he had other, another 11 people. They said, well, this fellow will put all of us in trouble. So all of them, they ganged, you know, together. And she said, sir, we are all truthful. This is the only fellow who is corrupt. They all became one. And they started blaming. That inspection team, they felt that maybe it is true because all are telling the same thing. Finally, he was suspended from the job. He j- lost the job. His wife and children left him. <laughs> within two weeks he was in the jail and he laughed see because i am truthful see anyway my guru has told four months let me wait she was there and he would tell truth whatever it is he would just tell so now he came to the court so the judge asked where is your attorney he said i don't have any attorney whatever i say no i myself i will so looking at his confidence and you know that the way he was speaking judge understood that you know there is something in this man because <laughs> when you go through all this you know a truthful person has got a different glow <laughs> so during the interval the judge called him actually tell me what happened so he said see i have promised my guru <laughs> that i will tell only is true chat chat that guru is my guru also <laughs> <laughs> you see how the events turn up and then judge with his influence everything he released him and after i think 3 or 4 months he was just lying down under the tree and ka then comes a telegram saying that see your great grandfather government had taken some land from him and therefore the money had to be paid but they did not pay it so along with interest you are going to get this much of amount some lakhs of rupees in those times he was stunned and this was exactly the day when that you know the <laughs> four months were getting over he was amazed it's a big money at that time and his wife and children came running back you know what he did he said you keep this money just for four months i practiced truth and if this is what has happened to me i want to see what will happen to me throughout my life if i practice this he gave the money renounced everything and left it's a beautiful story uh, stick to this one virtue truth ruta sat So the point is this the whole world is functioning in truth if you can just pay attention to the truth as god more of it we will see tomorrow om namo bhagavate vasudevaya ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय 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 ओम सर्वे भवन्तु सुखिनः सर्वे सन्तु निरामया 
सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित् दुःखभाग भवेत् असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतम गमय ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ओम